So I'm going to prompt it like this. Something I noticed is that these models have gotten better at adding important information to the function that's being produced. So the name of the function looks OK for me. The arguments look OK as well. And then the code looks fine, looks like it's going to work. And then it also gives me an example usage. It generated the code, and then it gives me an explanation also. This is a very detailed explanation, which I really like, because sometimes we can use this, for instance, to generate like documentation and so on. But I like the example usage. I really like that part. And something that's missing here is the comments, right? So I would have liked for the model to add comments for the code examples that it's producing, right? in this case, the function. So it did not provide that, which is something that can be improved. But this is a small model, and it's capable of doing this in a very effective way. So this one usually requires some code execution. There are some models that get this right. So for instance, GPT-4 gets this right sometimes, in some cases. Cloud 2.5 Sonnet also gets it, but it's not as good as GPT-4. But I still love to do this test because I really want to see what's the reasoning to tackle the problem. So it's listing out the steps, right? How to solve this problem. So it says summon the primes, finding the last four digits. Okay, so those are the steps. But notice that it really didn't do anything. It just told me how to solve this problem and the different steps. So I'm going to Again, try to generate this again. Very interesting. It's not even attempting to solve the problem. It's just giving me the steps on how to solve it. I don't know if this is a capability that this model has. Maybe this is what they mean by constraint outputs or safety outputs. I don't know. This is something I have to look into a bit more closely. But this is really interesting. It didn't give me an output. It just gave me the explanation. Now, how may I use this? It's actually useful because if I can generate the steps, I can use this smaller model to generate the steps really quickly and then provide these steps to a bigger model on how to actually perform this particular task or get to the solution. That could be an interesting way of using the output here that we see. Google DeepMind just made this very exciting announcement. So they are announcing this 2 billion parameter model to the Gemma 2 family. They mentioned it offers best-in-class performance for its size and can run efficiently on a wide range of hardware. In this video, we're going to get into the details of the announcement. We're also going to take Gemma 2 2 billion model for a spin in Google AI Studio. And I'm going to go through some other bits that were part of this announcement. Before I do that, please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Let's get right into it. So their main announcement here is smaller, safer, more transparent. Advancing responsible AI with Gemma. So Gemma 2 is the main focus here. And specifically, they want to create smaller models. They want to create safer systems built with these language models. And they also hear about transparency. All these companies like OpenAI, Mistral, and Meta are focusing on these three different vectors. The reason is because a lot of developers today are interested in building these LLM applications with all these components as part of the application. So let's see how Google is approaching this problem. So they had announced already the 27 billion and 9 billion parameter size models before. The ranking of those models in the LMSYS chatbot arena leaderboard, apparently they are outperforming a lot of the popular models that are twice its size. So the expectation is that this 2 billion parameter model can also produce very similar results. So they mentioned that this is Gemma 2, 2 billion, a brand new version of the popular 2 billion parameter model featuring built-in safety advancements and powerful balance of performance and efficiency. I think this will be super, super helpful for developers that are building with performance in mind and also making these models a lot more efficient in terms of latency. Not everything will require you know, a super intelligent language model like GPT-4.0 or Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. Sometimes you know, a small component of your system can be achieved or perform with a smaller model that has some type of capability. And I think this is where Gemma 2, 2 billion, and these other smaller language models would fit in. Shield Gemma is interesting. It's a pseudo safety content classifiers. If you have been in the space for some time, a lot of these companies provide like these toxicity classifiers or hate speech detectors. Some might be familiar also with the OpenAI moderation tools. So it's along the same lines. Meta has been doing a lot of work around these responsible AI systems 
and components that you can use, such as the, the Llama Guard and so on, just along the same lines. Very interesting to see that Gemma is the foundation model that's being used for this particular content classifier. Gemma Scope, which is a nice part of this announcement, is about model interpretability. So we have seen OpenAI, I believe we have seen Anthropic as well, had made a lot of announcements around using like autoencoders, sparse autoencoders, for instance, to better understand the inner workings of these language models. If you can better understand what sort of prompts or tokens activate certain features or what features corresponds to certain tokens, then you should be able to better control these language models. But this is really difficult, right? And it's something that's being researched heavily. And the reason it's difficult is because obviously these are really large systems. And, and so what they're doing here is they're releasing or open sourcing some sparse autoencoders for researchers to have access to this and to discover how LLMs are really operating internally. So this is great for explainable AI and so on. So here's the Gemma 22B. This is the score on the chatbot arena, the ELO score specifically. You can see that Gemma 2 outperforms most of these models. This to me is kind of crazy because this is a 2 billion parameter model and it's already outperforming GBD 3.5, which uh, up to a couple of months ago, which was one of the top performing models. This is just showing you more or less how quickly this space is actually developing. And so we expect to see a lot of these smaller language models catch up with some mid-size level models as well. And this is what we are already seeing with this Gemma 2 2 billion model. And the way they achieve this, as I mentioned here, is that they do this by learning from larger models through distillation. This is an important point here because this is what Meta also announced, right? When you watch the Meta announcement very carefully, they are focusing on synthetic data creation. They're also focusing on fine tuning use cases and also this idea of distilling models, taking these bigger models and leveraging those bigger models to produce very capable lightweight models. And I think there will be a lot of competition around this. We saw with GPT-40 Mini as well, catching up with these other bigger models and some of these benchmarks as well. And so there's a huge competition, a lot of activity happen with distilled models or these mini-sized models. That's very exciting to see. Again, you get performance and you also get efficiency. Just a bit on what GPT-2B offers, exceptional performance, it can be deployed cost effectively as well, and it's open and accessible. You can even run it on free tier of T4 GPUs in Google Collab. This is something I'll be trying in a separate video, sexually explicit content and dangerous content. I think this is really helpful for developers. If you are developing with language models today, as I do mention in most of my trainings and courses, and there are different sizes that you can leverage, right? There's 2 billion, there's 9 billion, there's 27 billion as well. And there's a lot of optimizations that are in play here as well, because obviously when you build these applications, you care about latency as well. And this is just a chart showing how good these models are at detecting certain types of content using different benchmarks and data sets here and the higher score means it's better so you can see how it outperforms things like the OpenAI mod API the llama guard I might actually do a separate video as well comparing these two things and also give you more perspectives and ideas on how you as a developer LM developer can leverage these safety tools this is Gemascope as I was saying it's really interesting that a lot of these companies now like OpenAI Anthropic and even Meta are building these tools or building these dedicated specialized neural networks can help you understand how these models are learning and how they interpret information and if you can identify patterns it allows you to better steer these models right and can better understand how to better prompt them and so on so there's a lot of benefits that can come from that this is why there's a lot of interest and one of the methods that's used is using these sparse autoencoders and what they have done is they have made over 400 of them freely available for you to go and experiment with. They also made this really neat tool or interactive tool where you can go and analyze model behavior. This will probably require a separate video to do, but it's really cool. You can go here, for instance, and just choose programming. It generates something using the Gemma model, right? These are the tokens. And when you highlight the tokens, you can see which are the features that are activated here on the right. So you can also click on the features activated and you will see which are the corresponding tokens. So that's really cool. You can see the activation of the tokens on the left. And this gives you insights, right, into how these models are thinking or interpreting certain information. And it 
can allow you, for instance, to better steer the models and better prompt them. Um, and that's the announcement. Now, what I'll do is I'll jump into the demo where I will go through some examples. Now, we have basic examples here, but this is the Google AI Studio, right? You can go and choose the model. So Gemma 2 b is the preview model. I'll just select that. Hopefully everyone should have access to that if you have access to Google AI Studio. Then I'll just select sentiment analysis, the one that's proposed here. I think this is new and I'll just select that. And it says here, analyze the sentiment of the following trees and classify them as positive, negative, and neutral. It's so beautiful today. It's so cold today. I can feel my feet. The weather today is perfectly adequate. I say, here's an analysis of the sentiment of the trees. Notice how it's using the user role. And it's so beautiful today, positive, the user beautiful, and then it explains, right? Right? So you can constrain the explanation, but it's really neat that it does the explanation as well. I think it gets all of them correct. I'm going to choose this one, modify writing style. There's a lot of interest, obviously, into using these models to rewrite certain things using a different style, different tone. I think this is what they're trying to do here. And it says, uh, calling all tech junkies, investors, and curious minds ready to witness the future and so on. So this is the text. And then it rewrites this into a more using a professional tone and intended for a corporate email is going to use that particular blurb of that event or startup event information to do that email to write that email so you can see how it wrote that um, it looks like it has a nice template so subject bear and so on uh, you're cordially invited to do the event name so it generates a nice template and it also has a closing here but yeah it looks good so far now i'm going to test this on a few other things that i usually like to test and i want to know how good this is at code generation. So one of my favorite tests is to generate simple Python functions because I'm looking at specific aspects of that function that's generated. So I'm going to prompt it like this. Something I noticed is that these models have gotten better at adding important information to the function that's being produced. So the name of the function looks okay for me. The arguments look okay as well. And then the code looks fine, looks like it's going to work. And then it also gives me an example usage. It generated the code and then it gives me an explanation also. This is a very detailed explanation, which I really like because sometimes we can use this, for instance, to generate like documentation and so on. But I like the example usage. I really like that part. And something that's missing here is the comments, right? So I would have liked for them all to add comments for the code examples that it's producing, right? in this case, the function. So it did not provide that, which is something that can be improved. But this is a small model and it's capable of doing this in a very effective way. So this one usually requires some code execution. There are some models that get this right. So for instance, GPT-4 gets this right sometimes in some cases. Cloud 2.5 Sonnet also gets it, but it's not as good as GPT-4. But I still love to do this test because I really want to see what's the reasoning to tackle the problem. So it's listing out the steps, right? How to solve this problem. So it says summoner primes, finding the last four digits. Okay, so those are the steps. But notice that it really didn't do anything. It just told me how to solve this problem and the different steps. So I'm going to Again, try to generate this again. Very interesting. It's not even attempting to solve the problem. It's just giving me the steps on how to solve it. I don't know if this is a capability that this model has. Maybe this is what they mean by constraint outputs or safety outputs. I don't know. This is something I have to look into a bit more closely. But this is really interesting. It didn't give me an output. It just gave me the explanation. Now, how may I use this? It's actually useful because if I can generate the steps, I can use this smaller model to generate the steps really quickly and then provide these steps to a bigger model on how to actually perform this particular task or get to the solution. That could be an interesting way of using the output here that we see. Another interesting task that I love testing with these models is how subjective they are, because if they have been aligned heavily with RLHF and human annotated data, usually they fail at this task, but I really wanna see how this model performs. So i asking it to describe what is the best sushi today. This is a very subjective task. And so I'm very curious how it responds to it. Yeah, so this is what we see with these models. It tells you this is very subjective. I think it's fine if it tells you that and then it gives you some recommendations. This is really detailed. Something I'm noticing with this model, like it's really providing a lot of details with the responses, in the responses. So that's really interesting to see. I don't know if this is a common behavior with this particular model is something to look at. But yeah, it gives me a lot of details, but this is something I expect to see with most of these models. Probably not what I wanted. I probably want the model to be a bit more opinionated for some of these tasks. But anyways, I think this was an interesting output as well.
how good are these models and information extraction tasks? Let me see. I'll also interested to see if I can use these smaller models for that. Okay, so it did Llama and Alpaca, but it missed ChatGPT and GPT-4. Okay, I'm just gonna test again, retest, let me see. So you can see it's not as good. It's not extracting these two bits, I'm not sure why. There is a variant of this task that I'll also like to test. So this one is just extracting model names from the abstract. The abstract is provided here. It will extract or return NA if it doesn't find any, which in this case, it doesn't have any, and it extracts NA. There are two more tests that I wanna do. So this first one is about MATLOGIC, and this is a popular test that we're seeing in the community. And most of these models fail at this. I think all of the models fail at this. And so it fails at this task, similar to what other models do. And the final one that I want to test is this math puzzle, which is something I'm testing to see how capable in terms of reasoning these models are. All models get this wrong as well. Most of the models, the only one that has given me the correct response is Lama 3.1405 billion parameter model. But let me just test this quickly and see if it works. Yeah, so it says number two. Yeah, it has a problem with understanding these ASCII characters apparently. And this is the wrong response. I'm just gonna regenerate again, just to check it. Yeah, it says number two, it's very confident it's number two. What's really interesting here is that most of the models give me four, which is the incorrect answer. The correct answer is number three, but all of them give me four. But this one consistently giving me number two, which is kind of strange, not sure why. You can see again, number two, number two, it says number two, it's very confident it's number two. I'll take a deeper look into this, see what's going on here. But anyways, I think the outputs of the model are interesting. They're very detailed. I'm not sure if that is because of the distillation process or if there's something else that they use to train these models. That's something that I'm gonna look into and see if I find anything, any interesting insights. But I will leave it at this and thank you for watching. Please again, leave a like in the video, that helps a lot. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't and I'll see you in the next one.